name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. It's lovely to see you all. Good morning. As we gather in God's presence this morning, we come as those who have heard God's still small voice. His invitation to be his beloved children. We offer God this, our worship, our thanks and our praise for all the graces and blessings received and in the hope of a foretaste of the banquet in the heavenly kingdom to which we are called. So let us open our hearts to his spirit as we pray together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. God welcomes us to the table and asks that we extend the same welcome to others. Let us acknowledge how often we fail to do that. When we accept all that you give us, but live without gratitude, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy when we hoard your gifts today and don't trust you for tomorrow. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. When we take your generosity to us as our due, but fail to be generous to others. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy upon you, forgive you your sins, and bring you to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. We say together, Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit. In the glory of God the Father. Amen. The collect for the third Sunday after Trinity. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have broken the tyranny of sin and have sent the Spirit of your Son into our hearts, whereby we call you Father. Give us grace to dedicate our freedom to your service, that we and all creation may be brought to the glorious liberty of the children of God. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A 
A reading from the book of Genesis. After these things, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham. And he said, Here I am. He said, Take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah, and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains that I shall show you. So Abraham went early in the morning, saddled his donkey, and took two of his young men with him, and his son Isaac. He cut the wood for the burnt offering, and set out and went to the place in the distance that God had shown him. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place far away. Then Abraham said to his young men, Stay here with the donkey. The boy and I will go over there. We will worship and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on his son Isaac and he himself carried the fire and the knife. So the two of them walked on together. Isaac said to his father, Father, and he said, Here I am, my son. He said, The fire and the wood are here, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham said, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. So the two of them walked on together. When they came to the place that God had shown him, Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then Abraham reached out his hand and took the knife to kill his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here I am. He said, Do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. And Abraham looked up and saw a ram, caught in a thicket by its horns. Abraham went and took the ram and offered it as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called the place, the Lord will provide, as it is said to this day. On the mount of the Lord it shall be provided. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. The response to the psalm. Look upon me and answer me, O Lord. Look, Look upon, upon me and, and answer me, me O Lord. Lord. How long will you forget me, O Lord, forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long shall I have anguish in my soul and grief in my heart, day after day? Look upon me and answer me, O Lord. Look upon me and answer me, O Lord my God. Light to my eyes, lest I sleep in death lest my enemies say, I have prevailed against him, and my foes rejoice that I have fallen. Look upon me and answer me, O Lord. But I put my trust in your steadfast love. My heart will rejoice in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord, for he has dealt so bountifully with me. Look upon me and answer me, O Lord. A reading from the letter to the Romans. Therefore, do not let sin exercise dominion in your mortal bodies to make you obey their passions. No longer present your members to sin as instruments of wickedness, 
but present yourself to God as those who have been brought from death to life and present your members to God as instruments of righteousness. For sin will have no dominion over you, since you are not under law, but under grace. What then? Should we sin because we are not under law, but under grace? By no means. Do you not know that if you present yourself to anyone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one you obey, either of sin, which leads to death, or of obedience, which leads to righteousness. But thanks be to God that you have, having once been slaves to sin, have become obedient from the heart to the form of teaching to which you were entrusted, and that you, having been set free from sin, have become slaves of righteousness. I am speaking in human terms because of your natural limitations. For just as you once presented your members as slaves to impurity and to greater and greater iniquity, so now present your members as slaves to righteousness for sanctification. When you were slaves to sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. So what advantage did you then get from the things of which now you have been ashamed? The end of those things is death. But now that you have been freed from sin and enslaved to God, the advantage you get is sanctification. The end is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is life eternal in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia. Welcome with meekness the implanted word that has the power to save your souls. Alleluia. Alleluia. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. Jesus said to the twelve, Whoever welcomes you, welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me, welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet, will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person, will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water, to one of these little ones, in the name of a disciple. Truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to, to you, you O Christ. Christ. I speak in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. These few verses are filled with instruction and affirmation for the first disciples. Jesus reassures them, after some rather vivid and not sugar-coated imagery, of what discipleship will be like for them in the preceding verses. These instructions to look after the less fortunate, to walk in the way of the righteous and prophets, is just as relevant to us here and now. Jesus tells his disciples of the rewards 
he points them to the bigger picture. You may recall in last week's reading a similar big picture image as Jesus told them to nurture their souls over their bodies. The living word of God speaks to us differently in different times and seasons. It's one of the absolute joys of scripture. As we reflect upon our reading this week, I cannot help but focus on the first verse. It has been a while since we've been allowed in our church buildings. As the lockdown measures are easing and we begin to plan and reflect about how us being church, the body of Christ, will be in the coming weeks and months. I wonder if these lines of scripture will be an inspiration for us. If we ask ourselves, what does it mean to welcome someone on behalf of our Lord and Heavenly Father? Do we see the phrase to welcome in a different light? Personally, when I reflect on this question, I realise both the enormity and the privilege of welcoming people into our church community. As our buildings become open again, it will perhaps renew our focus as disciples. But it is not just when people walk into our beautiful buildings that we need to be welcoming. Jesus tells his disciples that whoever welcomes them actually welcomes Jesus and God the Father. As Jesus' disciples in this time and place, the welcome comes down to us. In our baptism services, we welcome the newest members of the church family. It is part of the liturgy. We acknowledge that the person just baptised has become an adopted child of God and therefore part of our extended family. However, this does not mean that anyone who is not baptised should not be welcomed. In fact, nothing could be further from the truth. As we are reminded during the Mass in ordinary time at the invitation to confession, God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins to be our advocate in heaven and to bring us to eternal life. God sent his son to reconcile us back to himself. We are all welcome. We merely need to accept the invitation from God. It's important to remember that we are all beloved children of God every single one of us, whether we have accepted that invitation at the moment or not. As we prepare to start returning to a new normal way of life over coming weeks, it gives us an opportunity to review how we live our lives. There have been many acts of love demonstrated by one beloved child of God to another in the last few months. Some have made headlines. Some have been undertaken very quietly. But God has seen them all. As we begin this new week, and indeed new month, I encourage you to actively seek to welcome God into your lives, accepting his invitation and as we start to encounter other people, that you welcome them as you would welcome God. Amen. Let us together affirm our faith in God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. We believe in one God. The Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, 
of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world that God's generosity will shape the way all people relate. We pray for the rulers of the world, that they may met, seek to make their nations hospitable to those in need, and may encourage generosity in all their citizens. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. We pray for the church, for all bishops, priests, deacons, and the royal priesthood, that they work together so that the church may more and more reflect the new creation where we are all welcome to God's table. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray and thank you for all those who faithfully serve the church here in this place. And for all those that will continue to do so. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all in need, particularly for refugees and those fleeing violence, that they might find a welcome and a home in the places to which they flee. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. We pray for our community of New Mills, all who work, reside or visit here, that they find welcome in all places and recognise this place as one where they are accepted as beloved children of God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who are suffering from disease or despair. 
in particular for all those who are finding the lockdown easing frightening. That they may find the God who longs to meet their needs out of his generosity. Lord, in your mercy, we thank God for all those welcome has brought us into the household of God and for whose love has shown us something of the God we worship. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for those who are bereaved souls of all the faithful departed, that they may rest in peace and, and rise in glory. Generous God, you are more, always more willing to give than we to ask. Help us to be disciples and imitators of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Jesus opened wide his arms on the cross to welcome us all home. Let us show one another a sign of that welcome. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. O oh God, in the sacramental signs of bread and wine, you bring about the work of our redemption. Grant that our worship and service may be worthy of what we are celebrating through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Blessed are you, Lord God, our light and our salvation. To you be glory and praise for ever. From the beginning you have created all things, and all your works echo the silent music of your praise. In the fullness of time you made us in your image, the crown of all creation. You give us breath and speech, that with angels and archangels and all the powers of heaven, we may find a voice to sing your praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. 
How wonderful the work of your hands, O Lord. As a mother tenderly gathers her children, you embraced a people as your own. When they turned away and rebelled, your love remained steadfast. From them you raised up Jesus our Saviour, born of Mary, to be the living bread in whom all our hungers are satisfied. He offered his life for sinners, and with a love stronger than death, he opened wide his arms on the cross. On the night before he died, he came to supper with his friends, and taking bread, he gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Father, we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. We remember his dying and rising in glory and we rejoice that he intercedes for us at your right hand. Pour out your Holy Spirit as we bring before you these gifts of your creation. May they be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts in your presence, form us in the likeness of Christ and build us into a living temple to your glory. Remember, Lord, your church in every land. Reveal her unity. Guard her faith and preserve her in peace. Bring us at the last with St. George, St. James, the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints to the vision of that eternal splendour for which you have created us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom, and with whom, and in whom, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise, blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though, Though we, we are, are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed.
God whose beauty is beyond our imagining and whose power we cannot comprehend. Show us your glory as far as we can grasp it and shield us from knowing more than we can bear until we may look upon you without fear through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We thank you, Lord, that you have fed us in this sacrament, united us with Christ, and given us a foretaste of the heavenly banquet prepared for all peoples. Amen. The God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ Jesus, establish, strengthen, and settle you in the faith. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. During this difficult time, when our church buildings are closed, we're still a church, meeting virtually for prayer services and fellowship, loving our neighbours by offering practical support to the vulnerable and caring for our communities. The work of our church is reliant on people's generosity, a generosity that is a hallmark of a lived out faith and a testament to it. We give to our church in a variety of ways, but with the closure of all our buildings, we cannot receive all the gifts that we usually would. So we really need your help now. If you're able to give more at this time, 
here's how you can help.